So, so, so. So coming to the first of the connectors I'm going to remove them in these videos. Got these two RF connectors. Got a low one on this board over here and sort of taller version over here. Basically with these the corner sort of pins on these are quite difficult to uh you can't basically tweak them around, they're really solid. So potentially part of the leg will always touch the side of the barrel. So it's pretty impossible to sort of use a solder sucker for example to suck all the solder out. There'll always be a bit against the sort of leg and the barrel so if you tried sort of pulling these out with a bit of force you will take some of the barrel out so i'm going to sort of show you a really easy way to drop these out basically we just turn the board over and i'll show you yeah like i say a really easy way so uh what we do flip it over and uh yeah show you how to extract these with uh, without much difficulty right so moving first to the rf connectors basically as you can see you've got five large pins and basically with the like saying earlier with the solder sucker you can't sort of tweak these around to sort of ensure it's away from the barrel all around so you'll definitely get points on these square corners that will touch the barrel and there will be solder down them like i said if you try and sort of pull them out of any kind of solder down there you could sort of damage the barrel and uh yeah if you've got internal layers that's not a good thing so this is quite an old school method some of the methods later in these videos i use a bit of tin copper wire for similar things to this but for this one, all I'm going to do is try and join all five pins together and then try and drop the connector out just like that. So what we do, basically add a bit of extra solder to all five pins. So if you get short between them, that's, that's a good thing because that's what you're aiming for anyway. So, so you get a few fumes out of this, so if you've got some kind of extraction, that's a, that's a good thing. So we'll try and join all five together. When we get to that point, we can then start to try and get the device out. So you see, I've got four joined. So just keep adding solder until we get all five joined. It can take a short while. So as you can see, I've got all five device sort of pins on the device joined now. So I'll put a bit more solder on my iron tip, and then we go on to the top and hope the device drops through. Let's just try it now. Keep adding solder all the time. So if I pull that away now, underneath there I have, just raise that up. There you go, you've got a device sort of there that's just come through from that side. So if I quickly flip this board over, I'll try and keep it in focus somehow. And that's the other side, just there. So as you can see, you've got quite a bit of solder come through in the middle pin but that's easily wiped away try and wipe that away now with an iron just to show it's solder as you can see it's just solder so basically what you've got to do now is sort of braid them out and uh, yeah that's the device removed fairly easily so that's a good safe way you've got no damage potential to the barrels so what I do I clean all this one up shortly and I'll put some photos up after like I say easy method just sort of join all pins together it should drop straight out. So anyway, I'm going to sort of show you the taller RF component now and uh, see how that one goes. Moving on to the taller of the RF connectors. Basically, same again, you've got the five tall pins. So you've got big square pins. Like I said earlier, you've got no chance of clearing totally all the solder. So again, just to sort of prove the point, I'm just going to drop this one out exactly the same. Yeah, it seems to work on all of them. So really easy method as you can see the one next to it's missing which i removed in a sort of earlier video of mine the exact same way so again just try and join all five pins together just keep adding the solder and eventually we'll get them all joined so if you've got extra large solder say 0 0.9 millimeter it's great for this i'm using 0.5 so i could have probably done with a bit wider as you can see i've got all five joined and now it should just drop out by doing this sort of same method as just in the previous video so just keep adding solder 
it should just drop straight out there you go <clears throat> so if i remove that underneath just push that into back into view there's the missing connector there it is so it's come out nicely and there's sort of five pads just need basically braiding off no damage at all just quickly turn that over so you can see device is missing there you go just got the, the remnants of the solder on the top so that's that one next to it's one i've done in the previous video so that's how easy it is and then you've got to do get your solder braid and uh, braid them out so like i say great method really safe a lot safer than trying to sort of wick the stuff out so anyway that's a good way of getting your rf connectors out so anyway i'm going to move on now to another connector and uh, yeah we'll see how that one goes Right, so moving on from the RF connectors comes this Ethernet connector. Now, you've got a joint down each side on these, holding the can on. And as you can see inside, you've got your eight contacts, and they, they go through the board, and uh, you've got a solder joint underneath. So basically, that means you've got two can joints and eight sort of pins going through the board. So what I do, I'm just going to turn it over, and I'll sort of show you how to remove this fairly easily. Right, so flip the board over, and as you can see, all I've done... I've wrapped a piece of tin copper wire around each of the two sort of these are the can joints, but one up each side, and I'm run I've run between the eight pin joints on the underneath. So all I do now I put a solder joint man there onto the wire, the same there, and then I basically get all this joined up together. And then all I do then is put my iron on the top, the heat will run along the wire, melt all the joints at the same time. And just pull the connector through. So what I'm going to do off camera, I'm just going to get all these soldered up, and then I'll rejoin you when we're ready to take the component out. Right, so as you can see, I basically soldered the loops at either end that go around the cam pins. I've re sort of joined all the eight pins together for my external connections. So it's, now everything's connected to that sort of tin copper wire that was running through it. All I've got to do now, heat all the area up at once. Hopefully. It should sort of drop out. It will take a little bit of force because these plastic sort of lugs in the fixing holes so it can be quite tight, so it will sort of take a little bit of force. But as long as all the solder's melted, it should come out okay. So anyway, first thing to do, get some external flux added. So the flux will really aid this. See it quite a sort of liberal amount added all around it. What I'll do now, just get me, I've changed my iron tip here, I've got quite a large one to get a bit more heat into it. So what I'm going to do is put quite a bit on my tip. I'm actually going to put a pair of tweezers just inside the connector, just to give it a bit of downward leverage. But as long as it's melted, it should should be fine. All I've got to do is just run the solder all the way along. It should pull out eventually when it's all sort of soldered up. All the solder's melted. It will take quite a bit of heat to get right through. You can feel it going now. There you go, it's got the thing that's got it out. All your pads are intact. It does take quite a bit of force to get that through. So I've got no missing pads at all. So what I'm going to do, it's got a little bit of solder around there, just sort of wick that off. So I've got all eight pads still there. I've got the one there. So everything's looking good. So all I've got to do now is I'll clean all these up with sort of braid and I'll put some photos up with the finished area. I'm just going to quickly turn it over. So what you can do, I'll basically sort of uh, just stop the video quickly and turn it over. And I'll sort of show the other side. Right, so as you can see, I've flipped the board over, and this is the top side. So basically, you've got quite a bit of solder come through, but the main thing is all the pads are still there. Obviously, all the barrels are going to be intact, and that's just the two sort of can joints that are holding the sort of sides of the connector. They're just the two plastic lug holes. But yeah, it does take quite a bit of heat to get these out. That's why it took me quite a long time with the iron on it. But eventually, it will go. Make sure, so when the solder's all melted, just give it a little bit of force. I just put a pair of tweezers inside and levered it down. Don't do it too early, obviously, because you sort of could risk the pads. But to me, it's a better method than trying to sort of suck out all the solder around the pins. 
So anyway, I'm going to move on now to a single row header. I've got a good method for getting them out, so uh, let's move on to that one. So moving on from the Ethernet connector, we come to this simple eight pin header. It's just one straight row of eight pins, about an inch long, end to end. Basically, what a lot of people would do is there's two sort of methods that I've seen a lot of people do over the years. Basically, you can pull these pins out one by one, then sort of wick the holes out. Or you can sort of try and wick all the solder around the pins and uh, you know until you've got all eight clear and try and sort of get the connector out that way. But this this is it probably an easier method than them two. I'll turn the board over, then I'll show you the, the method that I, I sort of use for these. It's sort of really easy, works well. And uh, yeah, I've used it for longer versions of this connector than this one. So uh, what we we'll do, turn the board over and then uh, I'll show you how I drop these out. So as you can see, I've turned the board over so you can see the joints from the eight pins and I've basically laid a piece of copper wire right along the length. I've secured it down up here with captain tape. So all I've got to do now is attach all them joints to that copper wire and uh, yeah, hopefully it should uh, should fall out. I may need just to put a sort of pair of tweezers just on the other side to give it a slight tweak out. Because sometimes these pins are quite tight in the hole. But as long as all the solder's melted, if you gently tweak it out, you should be okay. So as I always do, just I'm going to add some external flux just around the area. Just get slightly more. So the flux is really useful for this. It's, like I always said, it sort of enables the solder to, to melt quicker and flow better. So that's the flux all around the area. So all I've got to do now is attach all them joints to that copper wire. So I go down the row one at a time. May take a short while just to do this. So what do? Just go down one at a time. So they're all joined to that copper wire. And all we got to do now, just keep running it along the wire, and hopefully it should drop out. If it don't, you can always, like I said, you can always try and tweak it out with a pair of tweezers, just carefully. I'm just going to add a slight bit more to this area. Get it quite loaded up. Right, I'm just going to put a pair of tweezers underneath. So when it starts to go, I can give it a slight sort of help pulling out. So just run it along the line. And that's come straight out, as you can see. There's the, uh, there's the connector. It's basically just push that wire away. You can see all the pads in place. Just get that moved out of the way, the copper wire. Just go this way with it. As you can see, you've got all, all your pads are perfectly there. So all you've got to do now is wick them out. Your solder braid or solder sucker. And uh, yeah, clean the area up and uh, you're good to go to fit a new connector. So yeah, instead of trying to wick out every pin or pulling the pins out individually, when you're wicking the sort of pins out of these barrels, it's hard to get all the solder out. This method's just a really easy way. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that sort of concludes the first half of these videos. So what I do, put a few photos up, and then we move on to a few more examples in the second half. So, so. So moving on to the first connector in the second half of these videos. This one's an FFC connector. As you can see, I've just shown one sort of side of this connector. Around the other side, it's exactly the same. So you've got a row of surface mount joints right along it. Now basically what I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to try and put a piece of tin copper wire up either side. I'm going to use two soldering irons and try and just 
lever it off to one side and uh yeah hopefully all the all the pads and everything should be intact i've used it a few times this method it does work quite well normally you take these off a heat gun or hot air gun but I understand not everyone's got one of them so yeah if you've got two soldering irons uh hopefully this uh, little demo sort of show you how to do it with them so what we do first of all I'll just get the tin copper wire tacked into position along the row i'll do that off camera and i'll rejoin you just to show you the connector being taken off quickly explain what i've done so far for this connector basically i started with a piece of tin copper wire as you see at the front i've then turned it into this four-sided sort of shape here in the middle that's going to sit nicely around the base of this connector and it can't go anywhere because it's sort of because of the shape of it it's sort of trapped you, have, you can actually slide this over the top of the connector so that's how you get it on and then i've basically joined up all the pins right along both sides as you can see i've just shown the front row here but around the back is exactly the same so when you put your iron on there one on either side the heat's going to travel right along and it should get all the pins sort of melted at the same time all the solder melting and you should just be able to sort of push off the connector to one side and yeah so what we do i'll get straight on with uh, showing you the method to get this off and uh yeah hopefully it goes all right and you can see the sort of great sort of method this is right so what we do first just add some external flux i've already run some around the back just for the sake of the video what we do just got a small amount of plastic cable tie just run a nice sort of bead of flux right along the joints that'll enable the solder to sort of, sort of melt nicely and hopefully run quite quickly along the line what we'll do is get a small amount on me both my irons and then just uh yeah put your irons along the wire and uh let the heat travel along just give it a quick aid and it should sort of get all them melted hopefully it should just push off to one side any second there you go just push it off of there as you can see it's got that nicely off all the pads are nicely as you can see all sort of perfectly all there all nice and tinned up ready for the new connector and that's how easy it is to remove these so i'd say just move sort of make a cage shape right right around the base sort of tack them all in position and uh yeah it's quite easy to get these off and the connectors actually once you sort of took that cage off and uh, cleaned it up the connectors probably but for instance if you put it the wrong way around if you can do that yeah the connector is good to go for a replacement uh, you can use the same connector again so anyway what we do now move on to another connector and uh, yeah we'll see how that one goes quickly before we move on just wanted to show you the end result for this connector as you can see got all the pads perfectly intact perfectly tinned for the new connector and as you can see the connector i've taken off if you look right around the bottom there's very very minimal sort of any signs that this was taken off is a slight right in the middle is a slight slight sort of burn mark but a very very small amount so you could reuse this connector not a problem whereas if you took this off a heat gun you'll probably sort of melt some of the plastic so actually this is a really good method and uh yes yeah, like i say not not everyone's got a heat gun so this is the other option get yourself a second iron and uh yeah there's so many things you can do with two irons i've sort of showed in other videos about that Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little demo. And uh, what I'm going to do now is move on to the next connector. And yeah, I hope you enjoy that one. Right, so move on now to this basically 10 pin box header. Now, over the years, I've seen many people try and wick out all the solder from every individual pin. And it's sometimes fairly difficult to sort of get 100% of the solder from around the pins. Sometimes there's some remains down the barrel. So as you sort of pull the connector out, some of the barrel comes out. If you've got inner layers on your boards, obviously that can do some internal damage. So it's a really easy way of getting these out. So what we do, we flip the board over and uh, I'll sort of show you a good method for dropping these out fairly easily. So we sort of flip it over, then we move on to the sort of the removal stage. See, I've flipped the board over and these are the 10 joints of the uh, box header. All I've done, I've folded a piece of tin copper wire over, sort of placed it up the centre of all the 10 joints. All I'm going to do now is tack all 10 joints to that piece of wire. And that basically that will enable me to then hold an iron on the centre point. The heat should disperse on all 10 equally. 
and these components should just drop out. You can do this without tin copper wire, which probably most people would do. But you're always chasing your joints because there's always maybe these four solder as you move along, these four become unsoldered, and you're always chasing the joint. So by placing the tin copper up the centre, this is going to sort of enable all ten joints to sort of be soldered at the same time. Like I say, it's a good method, and uh, it's a lot easier than using sort of doing it without the tin copper. So what I do off camera, I get these all tacked onto that centre tin copper wire. And then uh, I'll rejoin you and uh, we try and drop the connector out, see how easy it comes out. Right, so as you can see, I've basically joined up all 10 pins to the centre tin copper wire. So I've basically got one nice long joint connecting all 10 pins. So what I'll do now, I'm just going to add some external flux just around this to uh, aid the sort of solder and melting. Just get a small amount. Um, basically, I apply this with a cable tie, a plastic cable tie. So just put a small fillet of flux all around it and sort of some over the top. So flux is pretty key when you're soldering. So that's basically coated all this joint in a nice layer of flux. I've actually changed my iron tip for this. I'm going to use a sort of slightly bigger tip, sort of generate a bit more heat and uh, hopefully we'll see this connector drop out. So what I'll do is get some solder on my iron tip. Just lay the sort of tip on top and uh, hopefully it sort of drops out fairly easily. We'll just hold it on the top. The tin copper should keep all 10 joints sort of heated up at the same time. And it should drop out any second. There it goes, it's gone right through. So there you go, that's how easy it is. There's your tin copper that's sort of fallen out of place. We'll just show in there and basically got 10 good pads no damage to any of them so we've got to do is wick them out and uh yeah you're good to go to put a new connector in so what i'll do i'll clean these up quickly and then i'll sort of rejoin you and show the uh the finished article yeah basically i was just going to show you this connector once it was cleaned up i'm just going to show you sort of wicking out some of the solder i've already cleaned these free holes so i've still got a few to go Basically, when I wick my sort of holes out, braid using solder braid, I always add flux to my braid, which is quite important. And with this one, I basically hold it sort of slightly away from the end. That way, the solder can travel both directions, and you that means you can sort of suck more out the hole at any one time. As you can see, that one's gone perfectly. So we'll just do one more. So if you put, add flux to your braid. And uh, that's a great benefit. And yeah, basically, if you hold it away from the end, like I say, the solder gets to travel both directions, enabling you to sort of wick more solder up at any one time. Let's just do one more. As you can see, it's gone both directions really nicely. Pull it away slowly. And that's basically how you clean your holes. So, what I do, I'll do the other five and then uh, I'll sort of show you the other side. And yeah, good, good method for getting your connectors out. Right, so I quickly finished wicking out all the holes, the remaining holes with the solder braid. As you can see, I've got a, yeah, you can see sort of clear daylight for all the barrels. Obviously you've got no barrel damage because you didn't pull the connector out, it dropped out of its own accord. So there's the connector and basically that's, uh, that's basically the tin copper wire that was used with sort of an excess solder still sitting on it. So yeah, basically no damage at all it's a great method it's a lot safer than sort of trying to wick out all the solder from the barrels so you've got any sort of uh, headers similar to this that's that's a good method so um what i'm going to do now i'm going to move on to the final connector and that's uh, another connector i'm going to use sort of tin copper wire to sort of remove it and uh yeah hopefully you enjoy that one right so moving on to the last connector within these short videos we've got another ffc fpc connector now basically it's a good way of getting these off if you haven't got a hot air gun. Basically all you've got to do is get a piece of tin copper wire, solder it to one of the fixing pads at this side for instance, form it around this corner, tack it onto all these six pins at the back, go around the other corner and join the same sort of similar fixing pad like this one up the other side. And basically when you get your iron, all you've got to do then, hold it on across these six pins at the back. The heat will then travel both sort of directions sort of round to both fixing pads, melting the solder on both of them. 
So all eight joints should melt at the same time. And literally you can just slide this connector off in this direction, leaving all your pads nice and uh, safe on the board. So yeah, it's a good option if you haven't got a heat gun. So what I'm gonna do off camera, just to speed the video up, I'm gonna get the tin copper wire formed, just tacked onto all the joints, and then I'll sort of rejoin you and uh, show you how easy it is to get it off with an iron. So I'll rejoin you at that stage. Right, so as you can see, I formed the tin copper wire around this sort of corner, right across the six pins at the back, goes around the other corner. I've attached it to both fixing pads, this one and one on the other side. It's attached to all six pins at the back. So all I've got to do now is hold my iron on this back point here, across these six pins. Like I said, the heat should travel along the wire, melting this solder on this fixing point, the same way on the other side. Then we should basically just be able to slide this connector off in this direction. So yeah, let's give it a go. So basically, get a small amount of my iron tip, just lay it across the back joints, and then hopefully we should see the uh, the fixing pad melt on this side, and it'll be the same around the other side. So all I do, not so, I so load my iron up with a small amount, get it laid across six, six pins at the back. And hopefully the heat should travel round, and then we should be able to pull it off any second when it sort of travels right round. Shouldn't take too long to go round. I can see it going slightly this side, so it should be any moment now. Should go. So that's quite a good method if you haven't got a hot air gun. There it goes, see it all going now. So without the tin copper, you wouldn't be able to get this heat around all six pins at the same time. And that's got it all off. All I've got to do now is whip them pads off. So just get a sort of small amount of solder braid, pull the solder off all round. Just clean that off. I've got some sort of flux loaded on my braid just to aid the sort of solder braid to work properly. So as you can see, I've got a perfectly all clean board, just give that a quick wipe over with my ultrasound cleaning fluid. This is the preferred fluid that I like to use when I'm cleaning boards. Just put my tweezers on there just to sort of aid the cloth. So as you can see I've got a nice result, all the pads are spot on, perfectly safe and uh, good to go for a new component. So that's basically how I get them off. You can do this sort of method with USB sort of connectors. So you've got similar fixings around them. So it's a good method if you haven't got a hot air gun. So anyway, that sort of concludes these videos. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed what you've sort of seen in these. And uh, what I do, I'll put a few more videos up in the near future. And I'll put a few more photos up for this sort of video in, uh, in a few minutes. So uh, yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll see you again soon with uh, some more soldering videos. So until then, take care. And uh, good luck with all your soldering projects. So, so, so.